Previously on Baldur's Gate, Frank took a worm right to the eye, then performed brain surgery terribly, met a few new friends, and learned telepathy. Then he immediately ignored just about everyone who needed help. Using the power of both magic and squids, they were able to escape for a minute, and then he took a rock to the head and fell to the planet. And that's where we find ourselves now, on some desolate beach in the middle of who knows where. The beach, as you can imagine, is a wreck. I mean, a ship just crashed down. There's ash everywhere, barrels, all kinds of stuff. I didn't have to go far, but I came across this lovely lady. And of course, she immediately threatened me. Stop! Not another step or I'll... But then she started to recognize me. It's you. You're the one who tried to free me on the ship. We have no time for stragglers. You made the effort. And then it got awkward. Now, I don't know what happened to my little brain pet that I did have, but now I'm fighting these guys, and at least I've got a fighter in the party. And the game at this point really starts to open up. You can see where I'm starting to take damage in fights, and you can actually choose a number of different directions to go. So, as you can imagine, I probably picked the wrong direction. My fighter, her name is Shadowheart, by the way, uh, she suggested we go up to those cliffs where she's like banging on the door. I went totally different direction, and I found these guys. They're completely freaking out, trying to pull somebody out of the wreckage, and you can see really clearly, it's the Mind Flayer. Probably not a great move. I love that that's a perception roll, by the way, because I could have maybe not seen that. Kind of a hilarious idea. I ended up deciding to roll to basically see if I could break the mind control. And I was very lucky with a lot of these rolls, actually. So I'm able to break this magical spell, and these dudes suddenly realize, like, oh my god, what are we doing? We're digging a mind flare out of here. And they decide to run away. Which actually gives me my very first level up. So I'm sitting there scrolling, and there's a lot of really cool stuff, really powerful looking stuff, and I picked Talk With Animals, because... I'm going to doodle my way out of some problems. Now, since we'd run the sailors off, the Mind Flayer was still trapped, and we got to decide what to do about it. You know, Mind Flayers really only have the one move, so he tried to flay my mind. But like I was saying earlier, my dice rolls were hot, and he didn't really stand a chance. I picked the option that let me step on his face. Just over this clearing, I found a guy screaming out. He's got some kind of accent, and... But I just decided to be mean to him. I was hoping for a kind soul. Well, not to worry. I learned right after that that he's actually a rogue. Like everyone else, though, he underestimated my hot streak. But as it turns out, we're mindworm buddies anyway, so we're able to connect with our little telepathic link, and he also joins the party. Okay, so at this point, I'm roaming the world, and I'm just kind of doing my thing, looking around and exploring, and then I open my map. Now, the game hasn't prompted me about this, but I click on a teleport location, because apparently that's a thing. I genuinely don't know if this is a bug or just really strange storytelling, but I end up with this wizard guy who acts like he knows me and wants to join my party. I chalk it up to early access weirdness, but whatever it is, I'm gonna roll with it. There's not a lot of fights in the overworld area here, so it's mostly just exploring from point of interest to the next. My crew rolls up on this cage, and... The orc face lady from episode one is in there, and we, you know, connect with our, like, mind worm powers, and she is just as cordial as we remember her. You again. Get rid of them. And I mean, I did it, but not just because she told me to. I was going to do it anyway. He's right. At this point, I learned the maximum party size is actually four. I can't bring her with me, but she is super intensely talking about this place that she needs to go. There's a special mind worm healer that she needs us to go see. Between this and episode one, she is a walking glossary of words that I guess you're supposed to remember, of orcish or whatever this is. But at least she does give you kind of a goal to head towards, at least a place where you can go to get these worms out of your head. But suddenly, goblins were upon us, and there was a big fight on our hands. It was incredibly dramatic. Some dude named Cannon died, this gate closed down, and we immediately found ourselves in the biggest fight of the game so far. Lots of goblin blood was spilled that day and we defended the sanctuary. It was like showing up at the right place at the right time and they gave us VIP access inside. There are children here, you fool! We was running for our lives. On the inside, they seem a little upset that the goblins were led to the gate. There's a bit of an argument and it got a little heated, but luckily I was there to intervene. 
After a quick nap, the leader gives us the lay of the land. The long and short of it is that there's also a druid healer that could potentially get the mind worms out as well. So we're presented with a choice. We could go to the orc face lady's location or we could try to find the druid healer. Since the orc lady's not even with us, we just start running around the druid area kind of looking for trouble and we came across this lady who's in the process of being ambushed. So naturally we kick the crap out of that guy, save her, and we end up getting this ancient soul coin which I don't think is in itself that important, but it gives us inspiration. Here. I guess because I'm a devil type character or whatever, I collect souls, and since that's a soul, that gives me some kind of inspiration. Anyway, inspiration lets you roll an extra time if you ever screw up, and you can choose to use it or you can kind of hold on to it. So I'm really psyched, and as we're running around, all of a sudden I see something absolutely amazing the first animal I've come across, and I can speak with animals because I'm Dr. Doolittle. So, here I go. Here's my moment. Get out! The squirrel lunges at your foot and bites it. Now see, I had taken for granted that even though you can speak with animals, animals might still be jerks. So, we left. Back near where we came in, there was a number of merchant carts, so we went to check that out. Came across this little kid, and as you go to buy nothing from his absolutely trash store, it seems like he and his buddy steal from you. It gives you kind of an indication of where they're hiding, but I can't really get in there right now, so we're going to have to loop back there when I figure out how to get in there. When I attempted to do a little creative exploring, I was able to find some secret stuff. I will likely end up saying this multiple times, but quick save is your friend, my friends. There are lots of games where traps are an inconvenience. In this game, they are absolutely lethal. And like I mentioned before, cutscenes don't stop the game in the background. Obviously, situations like this are unfair. You shouldn't be expected to have to play through this. That's a great excuse for a quick load. This one turned out to be a decent little fight. And at the end, I found an injured guy on the ground. Halfling? Dwarf, maybe? It's one of those moments more similar to a Dungeons & Dragons experience, I guess, where you're outside of a fight and you decide to use a healing spell on this NPC. I'm not really sure why, but I really dig moments like this. They're kind of few and far between, you don't really see them too often. Anyway, he pops right up, he's super thankful, and he's gonna run off to warn some people about goblins or whatever. So we decided to leave the druid area, and as we're running around we stumbled on these guys. And they are desperately trying to save somebody who has a worm in their head but I think that guy's unconscious. The game sends you through another new tutorial at this point for a concept that allows you to kind of control other people's minds who don't have worms in their head. Now I go through with this, but it makes me a little reluctant to use it again and again. I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theory guy, but I feel like if I make this worm more powerful, I'm just going to be a mind flayer faster, right? I don't want to be a mind flayer. What ends up happening seems to be like these people are actually just worshipping this guy because of the worm in his head, which might be pretty convenient in the future. Once we convince them to bail, this guy dies again like extra hard, and then we're treated to a disgusting scene of the worm kind of emerging from behind the guy's eye. Now look, chapter one Frank probably would have just killed this worm, maybe even chapter one and a half Frank, but... Chapter 2 Frank is turning over a new leaf, and I'm thinking, this worm, I'm gonna let him go. Well, look at the little guy, he ain't gonna hurt nobody. I can't even imagine how a decision like that could come back to bite me. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably fine. A little ways up the road, I found a boar. Uh, the boar didn't have any blood in it. And my rogue, who seems to know an awful lot about vampires, is the one who kind of filled me in. I didn't want to say anything, because I didn't want to worry you. They are ferocious creatures. So getting that foreshadowing out of the way, we just kept on the road. Get over there! We found a little town, but it was infested with goblins. Using my persuasion skills though, I just convinced them I was awesome and that I could just explore the town without having to fight them. And I did. At this point I'm really not regretting my choice of class because being a bard does make all of this a lot easier. A few steps into this town, I came across this well. And the well looked... suspicious. So we used our intelligence to really look deeply into the well. And at that point, we saw, you know, of course, there's something at the bottom of the well. That's where I'm going with all this. But we've got decisions to make. Life and death decisions, because there are vampires, apparently. We're surrounded by goblins. We don't know what's at the bottom of this well. 
And I have no idea what level anything is because we've just been meandering around everywhere. So what choice did I make? Where did I go? What's at the bottom of the well? I guess you'll have to check out episode 3, which should be coming very soon. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll see it when it's ready. And as always, thanks for watching.